Well, I think the first thing to say about this report is um, congratulations to um, Patrick and to all the contributors. It's a, it's a really excellent report, very wide-ranging and very ambitious, actually, in, in its, the, the coverage, um, looking at topics like the voluntary and technical communities and also looking at um, monitoring and predicting drought. And I think those, those are two examples that couldn't be more different in their style, in their approach, um, in the systems processes and management approaches that are used. And I think that, for me, sums up some of the challenge and some of the opportunity of um, technology and humanitarian assistance. I think it's a report that is useful for people in the know, for the cognizant information manager who will use technology to communicate, um, and it's also useful for um, humanitarian responders. And, and I think that's a point to particularly make um, when I started in humanitarian work years back, um, we didn't have these sorts of opportunities. And I think uh, the World Disasters Report has really done a great job in bringing that into the mainstream. Um, and I hope there are a lot of people in the room who are, in fact, humanitarian responding organisations as much as there are information focal points and, and managers. Uh, I think from a map, map actions point of view, I just want to sort of reflect for a, a couple of points, really. Um, there's so much to say about the report, but I think um, there are really just a couple of areas that I'd like to sort of home in on from a mapping point of view. And for those of you who don't know what map action does, we basically provide GIS professionals uh, to uh, the humanitarian community on a short-term basis, immediately after rapid onset disaster and also in some conflicts, to provide maps and information analysis reports. So essentially what we're doing is using GIS technology to translate data into analysis information. And the purpose of that is really to help um, aid workers and search and rescue uh, operators make good decisions. Um, that's our purpose for being. And, and I guess that in the course of that, um, one of the things that struck me about the report is the, the, the points it's making about the volume of information and about data. And I think this is one of the, the core areas for us, is when we're in the field, is to work out what's relevant, what's important. Um, more is not always more. And I think we sometimes focus a bit more on the less is more. What do we really need to know in order to communicate what is required to make a decision? Um, and so I think that there's some interesting challenges in the report around some of that, and perhaps an area for further discussion later. Um, I think it's also important to, to be clear that one of the things that we offer is being a foot on the ground. A lot of the technologies referred to are technologies which are remote. Um, we work with a, a lot of those technologies. We use satellite imagery, we work with voluntary and technical communities, but what we bring into that picture is um, the importance of being able to verify on the ground and being able to engage with humanitarian actors who are our principal client to understand what they need and to shape our service to their needs in order to help them make better decisions. Um, so I think that actually that, that sort of question of um, how to sort of engage with all of that is quite a challenging one. For me, it's really about partnership, and I think there's a point that the film made earlier, that what we need to see in, in the course of taking up these technological op opportunities is better partnerships. And I'd really stress that that's as much from a, a mapping perspective as from any other, I would say. Um, the, re the report highlights a really interesting point about um, the demography of the use of, te of technology, who uses it. And it particularly homes in on affected communities and access to uh, technology for affected communities. But I think it's also probably fair to say that that may be an issue for the humanitarian community. And that when we think about the take-up of technologies and the use of technology in response, perhaps one of the areas we need to think about is the skills base, the knowledge base, the comfort levels, and the access of the humanitarian community itself to some of these technologies. I don't think it's achieved and arrived at yet. And I think that means that there's probably quite a way still for us, us to go with that. I'll just give you an example. We do quite a lot of training of um, humanitarians um, on the use of GPI GPSs. It's really basic um, training. 
And it is really quite extraordinary that in this day and age of all of those opportunities we see laid out in that report, a basic thing like being able to geoposition is still a challenge for, for some individuals and agencies. And it's not automatic that field teams will do assessments and capture data. Um, so I think that that, that illustrates a, a small point around the gulf, perhaps, between the potential and where we are now. Um, I think if we just move to look briefly at voluntary and technical communities, that seemed to me the area of the report that generated most debate. It seems to have come up in, in almost all of the chapters in one form or another. Um, and I think that... You can give me a tea. Um, I think that it's an area that we have perhaps uh, struggled with the most. Um, you certainly will see reference in the report to crisis mapping, um, to the digital humanitarian network um, and to other online voluntary and technical communities. Map Action is a member of the digital humanitarian network and we are trying to evolve our interest in working um, further with, with th those communities. But I think probably the key thing to flag here is the challenge of doing that in an unstructured way. Um, and I perhaps we'll leave it at that point and we can come back to it, so not to take from other people's opportunities to talk. But there is a real challenge in the volume and the diversity of communicators and how we engage with that in a way that's meaningful. And from a mapping point of view, that's an area we still need to really explore and develop further. Thank you. <laughs>